we're talking video. This is the Athletic Scholarship Podcast, episode number 107. Welcome to the Athletic Scholarship Podcast. I'm John Fugel, your host. I'm an author, speaker, a dad of two scholarship athletes, and I love helping parents and their kids walk the scholarship trail, get recruited, not the parent, but the kid, getting recruited all the way to an athletic scholarship. It's been a fun ride, a wild ride at sometimes nearly 20 years doing this. Thank you for joining us for 15 minutes that will change your scholarship future. And we're on our one question series is what we're doing here, taking one question each episode and uh, delivering some answers I hope will be helpful for you. Now, you want to go back and to listen to previous episodes, have some good questions that I tackled in detail, as I will in this question as well. This one on video, uh, a very hot topic that I get questions about, but this particular question uh, I want to highlight on this episode. So uh, a couple things. Uh, got some freebies for you. One of the freebies is the Recruiting Power Pack. Uh, three things that you have in there. One of them is a player profile. It's a template that you can use to build your own player profile and send it to coaches. That's what you want to do right away. So I got that for you. And you can get this Recruiting Power Pack at RecruitMe.com. Recruit-me.com. It's called a power pack because there are a couple other items. I uh, got a, a paper for you. It's a PDF called The First Steps to an Athletic Scholarship. That'll lay the foundation for you. And I got something else in there. I'm not going to tell you about it yet because it's a subject of this episode. But the recruiting power pack at recruit-me.com. I also want to offer to you, or I should say Audible is offering to you, my Athletic Scholarship Playbook, free. It's the audio version on Audible. All you got to do is sign up for their free 30-day trial, and they give you a chance to grab one of their books, one of their audio books, free. Well, you go ahead and grab the Athletic Scholarship Playbook. So it's free, free trial, free book. If you like to listen to books, then this is your opportunity to get one for free. It's my athletic scholarship playbook. Now, to do this, here's how you do it. I got a link for you on my website at recruitme.com on the resource page or in these show notes, there's a link. And you click on that link and that'll take you to the a page where you can on Audible be able to get that free audio book. So click the link on uh, my show notes or on my resource page on my website. Uh, the Athletic Scholarship Playbook also available on Kindle and as well as paperback. So you got three formats to choose from. But uh, hey, go ahead and grab it for free on Audible. Why don't you go ahead and do that? Well, here we are. Uh, fall is here <laughs> in some parts of the country, especially I'm experiencing here in North Carolina. It doesn't feel like fall. It feels like summer. Having relocated from Colorado, it's a little bit different. The summers go a little bit longer, but you know, fall season is up. Uh, football season starts and has started in a lot of areas. So we're going after it now, this whole recruiting thing. And when we're in season, when anything's in season, if you're thinking about a scholarship, it kind of comes top of mind now. But uh, we're heading into the fall and we'll continue this series, the one question series. Where do the questions come from? They come from you. And I want you to write me with your biggest recruiting challenge or question at john at recruitme.com. John, J-O-N, at recruit-me.com. There's also a link in my show notes for that. Please go ahead and email it to me and I'll put it up here on our podcast and answer it for you in detail like I am going to do right now for Scully's question. Uh, Scully asks, hey, I got a question. He says, if I send my introduction video and my footage, is the coach going to watch the whole video with 20 to 30 minutes of continuous footage? Uh, now, Scully got my freebie, the, the power pack, and I didn't mention that third thing in there. It's an audio about how to, when and how to use video. So it's an instructional audio on video. How about that? Uh, and you also get that in the free uh, power pack recruiting power pack. So he, this question came out of that as he listened and he was just wondering, hey, I got 20 or 30 minutes here. 
continuous footage as a coach, really, really going to watch all that. Uh, let me uh, kind of paint the picture, a broader picture of this. Uh, you are, you're sending a video. And um, in that video, what I recommend, the first thing an athlete does is to introduce himself or introduce herself just for 60 seconds. So it's personalized. Uh, the coach gets a chance to see you, not just an athlete on the field, but see you as a person. And that may stand out because most athletes don't do that. They just send this highly produced video and there's no personalization to it. Now, it's important that you, <laughs> on that video, if you're a talented athlete, that's going to that's gonna show. And that's really what the coach is looking for. Coach is looking to see what is your talent level. And they can see it pretty quickly. They can see it pretty quickly. They, they don't need to watch, uh, you know, 20 to 30 minutes of continuous footage to determine whether you're a prospect, a possible prospect for their program. But this continuous footage is important, and I'll explain why. Now, backing up as to what should be in this video, I mentioned an introduction. And then you want to do some uh, isolation, some close-up showing skills. Uh, whether it be in a practice or a game or whether it's staged, they want to see your skills. Uh, and that's that's highly important. They want to be able to zero in and watch your form, watch your technique, uh, see what kind of athlete you are. So, for instance, if uh, in basketball you want to uh, show some jump shots, you want to show some free throws, uh, other things that will demonstrate your your skill and your ability, uh, ball handling, all of that done in isolation as if they were standing there with you one-on-one -on -one watching it. Keep that in mind, one-on-one -on -one watching it. Now, this can, of course, be done in a game situation, and there are some sports where you can do that. Uh, for instance, uh, my kids, my sons were pitchers. In a game, I was able to highlight their um, their form in a live situation, in a game situation. Just do close-ups. Uh, as a hitter, you could do that as well. But there's some sports where you can't do that because the athlete is moving all the time. However, uh, even in a game situation, you want to zero in on the athlete. But to show the skills, what you want to do is show the athlete's skills from various angles even, so that a coach, imagine a coach standing there, as I said, watching that athlete right there with you. That coach is holding the camera, and that's where that coach is. So from the coach's perspective, as he or she looks, what are they looking for? You want to do whatever you can to show your athlete's uh, uh, mechanics, skills, and uh, that way the coach can make a, a good evaluation. The second thing you want to do is show the athlete in a game situation. And this is close-ups with the athlete in the game and um, in the contest, in the match, whatever it might be. If it's uh, track in, in the meet, you want to show the athlete in competition. And once again, doing that in as much close-up as you can. The coach can watch uh, how this athlete performs in context. Now, Scully is referring to something that I mentioned in the audio in the power pack, and that is 20 to 30 minutes of continuous footage. Why that is important, once again, imagine the coaches, uh, coach is there, and that coach is going to be watching, uh, coming to the game, coming to the match, coming to the meet, to watch the athlete, and will sit there and watch. If it's, uh, for instance, if it's a, a basketball game, I want you to parent, uh, film your athlete in the game for an entire quarter or entire half, running footage, uh, pan out. It's not a close-up on your athlete, but pan out so the coach can watch how the athlete performs, reacts, responds in context of the entire court, of the, of the entire game with uh, everybody on the court and how your athlete does in context. And that's why it's so important. Now, in answer to your question, Scully, you said, well, will a coach watch 20 or 30 minutes? Well, I don't know if the coach is going to watch all the way through. He or she will fast forward 
um, if if they can. I guess if it's on YouTube, they'll be able to fast forward, uh, change the speed. But uh, they'll watch some of it and they'll look for things. Uh, they will have already determined whether you have the talent level to possibly be a prospect by watching the close-ups, by watching the, the previous uh, minutes of footage. And this continuous footage is really important because as a coach gets that far, he, he or she is going to watch a little more closely, going to be watching more things like how do you respond in adversity? How do you respond when you fail? Um, wh- how do you carry yourself on, on the court or on the field? That those are the kinds of things that coach is looking for some clues while he or she is able to see you not in person yet. All they have is the video and they will study that as they see that you are an athlete that could be a recruit. Now, keep in mind this as well. Coaches uh, hear from a lot of athletes, get sent a lot of video links. And um, and, and so you're you're in competition with perhaps hundreds of other athletes that want to be recruited. One of the advantages that athletes we work with with Recruit Me is that we stress, I stress the importance of personalizing everything that you send to the coach. Now, you don't have to do that with the video, but the accompanying email that goes with that video, uh, perhaps a phone call leading to sending a video link. Uh, the fact that you are interested in that program, in that school, and you mention the school and the program by name, you may, and you, you mention the coach's name, as you say, dear coach so-and-so. Anything you can do to personalize it, to show them that, hey, you're not just uh, sending a mass email to everybody, even though you may be emailing 50 to 75 coaches, you've taken the time to personalize it to that coach for that school, which says, hey, coach, I'm interested. I'm interested. A coach would much rather recruit an athlete that is interested in the program as opposed to one who is like a cold call, uh, may not have any interest, and the coach has to chase him or her down. Yeah, that does happen with the elite, elite athletes, but coaches want to recruit athletes that are interested in their program. They don't want to have to convince or sell their program to you. They're going to do that, but if there's an initial interest, then that's a whole lot different than inviting you out or talking to you on the phone and trying to convince you to to even have an interest in the program. And that's an advantage. That's another tip to make sure you personalize your communication. I hope that answers your question, Scully. If Folks, if you want more information on videos, then go ahead and get my recruiting power pack, recruitme.com, recruit-me.com. It's right there. And the audio that I recorded it, in fact, it's from the audio book, is about uh, when and how to use video. Go, I go into more detail. Uh, and the, the book with um, the Audible version, the audio version on Audible, it's free, as I mentioned. And I have the link in my show notes or on my website, recruitme.com on the resource page so you can check that out. Well, that's it for this week. Make sure you send me your question. Send it to john at recruitme.com so we can talk about it next week. And uh, thank you so much for participating. Oh, wait a minute. Forgot to mention. Next week, I actually have a special guest. Uh, This is a guy who's going to talk to us about something that you're very interested in, and that is money, (laughs) the financial side of all this. Uh, He'll have some insights for us. What does it really cost even for a scholarship athlete to compete at the college level? What are those other expenses? And how can you get the best offer? And how can you go to the right school, which is the best fit for the least cost, even if you're on scholarship? Because in most cases, you don't receive a full ride. So he comes to us with a lot of experience in this area as a dad, as a coach, and also one who who counsels athletes in his school. So that's up next week as we take a pause and take a break from uh, the one question series. But I do want to have your question so I can pick it up in two weeks. 
Well, that's it for now. God bless you. Have a great week, and we'll talk to you next week.